Okay, numero uno. Composition. So, in terms of what makes a nice composition is, is the picture simple, is it clean, does it have strong figure to ground? Generally, when I'm thinking about composition, it's all about the frame, right? So, you remember in terms of the frame, you could create a nice dynamic engaging composition by having a lot of diagonals, having a lot of strong leading lines. Even remember if you could draw it the other way. Having it this way. Or, if you guys want to get really, really crazy, you guys can start drawing the opposite lines, and you kind of create some sort of crazy, oh, I'll just keep it simple. Anyways, so just kind of consider whether your compositions are simple and dynamic. And also one thing about the composition too is, remember this concept of figured around. So if you have a, a white background, do you just have a simple black dot against white background? Or do you have, you know, a black background with a simple white dot? So in terms of composition, what I'm essentially looking for, once again, the two things is simple and be dynamic. Simple, once again, simple background, single subject, simple emotions, dynamic, engaging hand gestures, facial gestures, emotions, diagonals. And the reason I like simple and dynamic is that they sound like opposites, but I think they actually complement each other, okay? So the first part of what makes a good picture is judge the composition. The next layer, I would say, is emotion. Okay. So let me ask you guys, what kind of emotions make a good picture? Smart, Strong, or strong or facial expression. What kind of facial expressions? Uh, surprise. <laughs> surprise, what else? Sad. Here, draw a sad face. Oh, no, I can't draw. You can't draw it? Yeah, I don't. Give it to her. Give it to her. Oh. You can't draw a sad face? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's pretty good. What are their emotions? Joy. Joy? Draw joy. <laughs> What's the exhaust? Oh, oh. Oh. Okay. Make him more joyful. <laughs> <laughs> More joyful. <laughs> Wait, what if you have joy, what do the eyebrows look like? Eyebrows. Raised. Uh, no? No? No. How about the cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful, okay? <laughs> I love, I love that. That's, that's your bad that's, that's your bad that's actually So, a great picture needs to evoke some sort of emotion. So, it's actually funny that like, even a simple happy face, this actually brought me a lot of joy. Yeah. Even I saw Sydney, she was like crying. Yeah. <laughs> so, a photo without emotion, that doesn't punch us in the stomach, you don't feel emotion, you're not going to remember it. Your job as a photographer and engineer is, you want to make pictures and images that have an emotional impact. Even as human beings, the life experiences we remember the most are the emotional ones. And the last one is, last but not least, I would say it's soul. 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 So, this is actually an interesting idea. Here. 
draw what you think a soul looks like. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> what does a soul look like? Small soul. Okay, okay. Person? Yep. That's a person. <laughs> oh, boy, so let me ask the class, how would you guys interpret this? Uh, top of the world. Top of the world. On the, on, on the mountain top. Mm -hmm. So it's so fun, right? Like, you can see that, like, all of us has a different definition of the soul. And I think this one is quite good, too, is that I think a soul is, like, like the man on top of the rock, a feeling of elevation and... It's all about your perspective as a photographer. It's your perspective and you got to ask yourself the question, why am I the only person who can make this picture? Do you guys ever see Google, uh, the Google Street View car that takes panoramics of everything? Why is it that only you can make the picture and nobody else? So, for, for example, for myself, I think my most soulful pictures are actually the pictures of Cindy. The reason why I think is that I could see my soul in this picture because of the love and the connection that I share with, with Cindy when I'm shooting. Or when you're also shooting pictures in the streets, these are like two street photos I shot in Kyoto. I think I see my soul in this picture is that the picture's a little bit dark, a little bit obscure, a little bit like anxious, a little bit intense. And it's once again this feeling of maybe perhaps anxiety or like slightly sad. Like I look at most of my pictures, most of my pictures are actually not really happy pictures. Most of my pictures are a little bit like dark and grim. And so maybe you can see Eric Kim's soul through his pictures because even though Eric Kim in real life is quite a happy, joyful person, maybe deep down inside he's actually kind of a more of a dark, tormented soul, but still ultimately, you know, has happiness and joy in life. This is the picture Cindy shot of me. <laughs> this is this is the the Eric the Eric project. So when you guys are looking through your pictures, kind of think whether. It doesn't matter if you shoot black and white or color or whatever, but ultimately, it's not how your photos look like, it's how your photos feel. Like, what do your photos say about you? So all these pictures, it's kind of like a sense of wandering, a sense of abstraction, a sense of, you know, darkness, a sense of, you know, power, a sense of being lost a little bit in the world. So I think ultimately, you want to kind of ask yourself, how, how come these are only pictures only you can shoot? And even you saw a lot of my dark street photography photos. I try to start to photograph Cynthia, like street photography style. So that's another thing you can think about is, a way you can add your style to your pictures is, how can I take the tactics and strategies of street photography, as shooting candidly, being quick, and using it to paint images of your own loved ones. So I'll give myself here. So to me, these are all essentially pictures I could shoot on the streets, except photograph my loved ones. So even seeing this you know, layer here, a nice quality in the form. This is just us about to have dinner, her getting ready in the mirror, and me just photographing and say, oh, I wonder if I can apply a street photography technique to add layers and reflections. And you see the hand gesture here too. I was about to pinch in the, the screen. <laughs> Leading lines here, tilted head. Nice lines here, the darkness and the shapes of the forms. As we're to look up, 
all these nice little dots here. Once again, you guys remember where this concept of figure ground is a little bit of white space around the black edges. Around below the white space. This is actually one of my favorite pictures of Cindy, but what do you like about the composition? Besides Cindy's buff arms. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Do you know who that is? Mother of Cindy. What kind of expression does she have on her face? Surprised. Oh, check out that muscle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that definition. <laughs> right? So, but in terms of the composition, it actually works really well is that if you think about this, if I put this into the Procreate app, this is essentially a composition that I've seen other street photographers do, and it's a composition that you guys could easily apply to your own photos. So, on the far right side, you have Cindy with her super buff arms, and she's filling up the right side of the frame. So essentially, that's the first element of her, the bookend. You can see there's no negative space around her, it's just filling up the frame here, right? And then here, in the bottom left corner, you have Cindy's mom. And she's essentially just another figure. So you see, that's essentially Cindy's mom in the bottom left corner, mm -hmm. and then you can see the, the tension of the composition of the yeah. And then, last but not least, this is the, the cherry on top, is the pose of Cindy. Oh man, your muscles are really big. <laughs> Up here, here. Well, this one actually kind of looks like a Matisse. Yeah. Kind of like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save that image. So, you can see. Oops. She should be behind. So that's Cindy, and that's the composition of her reflecting the mirror. And then, you have Cindy's mom in the background. Man, I think I'm actually innovating. I'm like, feel free to steal any of these techniques, guys. So, once again, in terms of the composition. This is the one like the photo looks like. And the reason why I find that this is an interesting composition is that you can apply this kind of same composition in street photography is that when you're out shooting and trying to create layers, getting very, very close to people and trying to get the right angle where you have somebody pointing a different direction. Do you guys remember from earlier this morning? I shared with you this picture of these, this lady here with the hand, the man here, and the lady here. If you look at this as a purely abstract image, this is what the, the composition looks like. So once again, you can see there's a subject in the far left of the frame, hand gesture, a subject in the center of the frame, and a subject in the right side of the frame. So this composition is actually almost identical to this composition. So this is why it's so important to study visual images, and not only your own pictures, but other people's pictures, because History repeats and keeps repeating itself. Nice. So, um, going back to the original picture of the hand. Whose picture is this again? Yep, Kamal's picture. So, ooh, Mark, you haven't had a chance to do, to do a little bit of sketching, right? I don't think you want me to. Oh, yes, I do. I don't think I, I should I have do, said do. that. <laughs> Just aim <Okay>. you on. <laughs> So, come up, come up. I don't think there's any way out of the corner. <laughs> I could, I could drop the iPad. Okay. <laughs> so I want you to use your finger, and you could pinch in, and I want you to draw all of the geometric lines, shapes, and forms you see. See, I can't draw. It doesn't have to be straight either. There's no straight lines in nature. There is an architecture. That's so why architecture is anti-nature. So I'll create a new layer. So I want you to zoom in and start drawing in the, the figures. Okay, you got a little pigeon friend there. And I, I actually found this very, this second pigeon very confusing from the oh, back. And it's 
really interesting when you get close. So you can actually see, unfortunately, the bag of chips is kind of a distraction. Good job. Why don't you start drawing in the composition on the right side of the frame? Because there's a lot of these nice little compositions. Oh, yes. They're, they're. The reason why it's important for us to start tracing and drawing like this is because, you know, children actually learn how to write and draw and paint by tracing. So even why I've been doing is I've been tracing my own pictures, the images of the great photographers and artists. Now what you can do is press the layers button, press the layers button, and then press the little checkbox next to that image to show image. Oh, nice and press that button. <laughs> Oh, beautiful image! All right, you take a, take a seat. So you can see, right? If you abstract the image, it's good. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually pretty good. You see these... If you just think about the background, these are the leading lines in the perspective. Right? And then you just think to yourself, oh, in terms of the subject, if I had the subject here, that'd be good. And voila. All these leading lines and the perspectives in the background lead to this man. And also what makes the picture even more interesting is that on the right side of the frame, you have these additional compositions which work. But the thing that's kind of a little bit tricky about the original image, you can see the, the pigeon here, the pigeon, the pigeon here, and the bag of chips, all essentially just become one blob. And this is the difficult thing with photography. You can't just be like, hey buddy, Put away your bag of chips. <laughs> so, analyzing your images visually after the fact is only good as a tool to analyze your pictures and ask yourself, do I want to keep the picture and publish it, or do I want to ditch it and not share it? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, in photography, you don't have, you cannot make a perfect picture when you're shooting. You only have limited control. You can control how close to shoot, if crouch down, when to click the shutter. But when you go home, your ultimate control as a photographer is whether to share the picture or not share the picture. Because yeah. a lot of people, you know, I'll give some students feedback and critique on their images, and they're like, I'm like, oh, you know, this is not good, that's not good, you should have done this differently. He's like, man, Eric, what do you expect me to do, man? Like, I was in a crowded room and my back was against the wall, what else do you expect me to do? I'm like, hey, look, I'm not accusing you of not being a better photographer, I'm just saying, these are what doesn't work in the picture, and ultimately you as the artist, you make the decision whether you want to share it or not share it. Because once again, you cannot control whether the room is crowded or not, but you can share, choose to share, um, to share the image or not. Yeah, that's all, come on.